Good evening, everyone. It's nice to see such a full house. I'd like to call the May 23rd meeting of the governing body to order. Madam Clerk, would you take roll? Mr. Johnson. Present. Mr. Labor. Dr. Rennie. Present. Mr. Roybal. Present. Mr. Seagrave. Present. Mr. White. Present. Dr. Aldridge. Present. Mayor Collins. Present. Mr. Cook. And Mr. Escobel. Here. One member's absent, we do have a quorum. Wonderful. Would you, I'll ask our <laughs> Mayor's Youth Council to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, if you'd all rise, please. Next item is number four, a expression of appreciation of the 2021-2022 Mayor's Youth Council and State of the Youth Address. We definitely have a great group here today. How many of you guys are parents of this group? That's fantastic. Thank you all for being here to support Ms. Devon. Good evening, I'm Devin Pies from the Office of Youth Alternatives. I've had the pleasure of working as Mayor's Youth Council staff advisor. Tonight, we are here to recognize the 20th Mayor's Youth Council participants. I ask Zoe London, to cut our chairwoman of this year's council to take the podium and present the State of the Youth Address. Zoe, welcome. Hi, so all have you all heard that I'm Zoe Lindeen. I am the chair of this year's Mayor's Youth Council. I've been on the Mayor's Youth Council for three years, and I've been thinking about this speech for a while now, and I've realized it's so hard to put three years of memories into one speech. I remember the day I got into the Mayor's Youth Council. My mom and Grammy were so proud of me, and I was so excited to start. I saw my name on the news, and it was one of the coolest things ever. If you didn't know, everyone that gets on the Mayor's Youth Council has their name announced all over like NBC, I think, and it's pretty cool. Um, I was so nervous for the first meeting, but I never felt anything but welcomed by all the different people that I have served with. I've met so many new people who have helped me grow into the person that I've become today. It has taught me a lot of patience, especially this year with being a chair. This year, we have accomplished so many great things within our community. Instead of doing one capstone project, we decided to do three within the couple months that we have. Um, we first held the same event as last year and we got an amazing turnout. It's called the Downtown Run Around and it's to support the small businesses within our downtown. It um, gets a lot of revenue because of COVID hitting them so hard and we think that it's just a great thing to keep going. Um, this is where the DD helped plan it and organize it, and they came to our meetings and just helped with all of the businesses and stuff, and so we would like to thank Jenna McCormick and Amber Treviso for their help in getting us such a good turnout. Um, the next project that we did was the Youth Day of Giving. We decided to help the community, even if it was in a small way. Um, and we decided that it would be a wonderful thing to just give out as much as we could and help support our community as much as we could. The Youth Day Giving is an annual event that gets a great turnout every year. And this year it got over 32,000 pounds of non-perishable and hygienic items. And we would like to thank Greta Morrow and Braddy Horwitz for all of their help organizing and letting us be involved within that project. And lastly, our last project was held less than a week ago and it was a blood drive to help our community. If you didn't know, one pint of blood can save three lives. So in total, we saved 57 lives with our blood drive. Stephen Moore was our help for the blood drive and he helped with 
everything. So thank you very much. This year's Marathon this year's Marist Youth Council has been the best and my favorite overall. This year, we got to know one another on a personal level, level with team building exercises and just getting to talk to one another, getting to know everyone and their favorite parts of their day or even their favorite parts of their school. Um, no year has been easy for the Marist Youth Council. Every year has been a little bit of a struggle with the three years that I've been on. Um, the first year was my sophomore year and COVID hit us. Um, Jan Spires was our leader at the time and she tried everything to help and get us keep going. We did COVID safe meetings with through Zoom and our chair was great. We did a capstone project with that too. And um, Jan tried to lead the way and make sure it was as normal as possible and I'd like to help I'd like to thank Jan for helping me along the way and understand what it truly means to be a part of the council she's an amazing person and the council couldn't do it without her my second year was also crazy with the overturn of the pandemic still going on and switching off mayors which just made everything more fun instead of getting to know just one mayor we got to know two so thanks to both Marion Orr and Patrick Collins because if we didn't have great mayors like you to, we wouldn't have a Mayor's Youth Council at all. <laughs> and I am forever thankful for the things that both mayors have done for our community. Now, lastly, my last year on the council was the best year and very different. First, we had a switch in mentorship. We no longer had Jan and because she retired. Instead, we have Devin and she has led the group fantastically and just is an amazing person in general. She never gave up on us, even though everything was new and she overcame all challenges to give us an amazing year. So thank you. <laughs> I keep losing my spot. Uh, generally, um, and lastly, um, thank you my amazing Mayor's Youth Council. This year has been an amazing year and is my favorite out of all of them. We accomplished so many things and I'm so proud of every single one of you for what you have done and how much help you have given us. Now I want to close with my experience on the Mayor's Youth Council, what I've gained, and what's, what, why this program is such an amazing program to be involved in. Even though I'm not going into politics when I'm older, I definitely believe that the council has taught me valuable life skills. I now know what goes on within the city and within our community. I joined not thinking much of it, but it turned into one of the things that I absolutely love doing in high school. This is a very bittersweet day for me, and I get to move forward with great memories and with knowing great people, but I also leave the Mayor's Youth Council, which is sad in itself. It's a very good thing that I know they're in marvelous hands with Devin. And thank you again, the Mayor's Youth Council, for helping me find myself and help others along the way. Okay. Zoe, tell the audience where you're going to school. Um, I'm going to Creighton University in Omaha, Nebraska for nursing. Good for you. Thank you for all your service. Thank you, Zoe. Mayor Collins, I invite you to come down and help pass out um, recognition gifts. Um, we will be presenting this year's recognition gifts. I would like to say thank you on behalf of the city and myself to the parents for having the privilege to work with your teens. It's been fantastic. I would also like to say thank you to the Mayor's Youth Council for making my first year as Mayor's Youth Council Staff Advisor a memorable one. I want to thank you all for bearing with me through the growing pains of learning a new position and adapting to the transition from Jan to myself. Thank you all for making this year a great one. Now I will be recognizing the Mayor's Youth Council participants. William Barrington. Will is an 11th grade student at Central High School, and this is his first year in Mayor's Youth Council. In addition to Mayor's Youth Council, Will is active in cross country, both indoor and outdoor track, Keystone Club, and is involved in Military Youth of the Year. Julianne Beach. Julianne is an 11th grade student at Central High School, and this is her first year in Mayor's Youth Council. Julianne was elected as the first vice, vice chairwoman by her peers in, MYC, in Mayor's Youth Council. Ty Bronder. Ty is a 10th grade student at East High 
This is his second year in Mayor's Youth Council. Ty is active in ROTC, mountain biking, swim team, 4-H, dog shows, and is also involved in the IB program. Caitlin Gansko. Caitlin is a ninth grade student at South High, and this is her first year in Mayor's Youth Council. Caitlin is active in basketball, student council, 4-H, lead for change, marching band, and soccer. Nevaeh Green. Nevaeh is a 10th grade student who's homeschooled, and this is her second year in Mayor's Youth Council. Nevaeh is active in girls soccer at South High and plays Cheyenne soccer traveling team. Alex Johnson. Alex is a ninth grade student at East High. This is her first year in Mayor's Youth Council. Alex is active in basketball, volleyball, FBLA, writing club, and holds two jobs. Andrew Lance. Andrew is a ninth grade student at Central High School, and this is his first year in Mayor's Youth Council. In addition to participating in Mayor's Youth Council, Andrew is also a member of the golf and tennis team. Molly Madsen. Molly is a ninth grade student at East High, and this is also her first year at, in Mayor's Youth Council. Molly is active in cross country, indoor track, and outdoor track. She has additionally helped raise $10,000 for empowering youth in Cambodia. <laughs> Cedar Munch. Cedar is a ninth grade student at East High. This is his, also his first year in Mayor's Youth Council. Cedar is active in marching band, basketball, and soccer. Elizabeth Stump. Elizabeth is an 11th grade student at Central and is serving her third year on Mayor's Youth Council. She is on Central's dance team, does figure state skating, key club, and will be going to France this summer with French club. Lastly, I would like to recognize our outgoing Mayor's Youth Council seniors. Madison Thomas. Madison is a senior at Central High School and will be attending the University of Tennessee this fall where she plans to go into nursing. This is Madison's first year in Mayor's Youth Council where she was elected second vice chair by her peers. Zoe London. Zoe is a, is a senior at East High and this is her fourth year on Mayor's Youth Council. Zoe was elected as chairwoman by her peers, is, active, is an active member in Skills USA, marching band, DECA, and has received bronze, silver, and gold congressional awards. Zoe plans to attend Creighton University in the fall where she plans to study nursing. Please give a round of applause for our 2021-2022 mayors. Thank you again for all of your hard work and we will go ahead and exit the back. Again, I'd just like to thank all the members of the Youth Council for their services last year and I will look forward to the interviews for next year's class. Mr. Mayor, don't they have to stay for the whole meeting? <laughs> they, they, they all had to stay through meetings all year long, so uh, we want I think, them to come I think they're done. <laughs> yeah. All right, Madam Clerk, are we ready for the next item? Yes, we are. Number five, consent agenda. All agenda items listed with the designation of CA are considered to be routine items by the governing body and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion on these items unless a member of the governing body so request and support by two other members is received. Any item removed from the consent agenda will be considered in its normal sequence on the agenda. All right, are there any items a member of the governing body would like to remove from the consent agenda? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Laybourne. I have three items. Are we gonna handle them one at a time? Why don't you do all three? 26A. Yeah, well, that's 26A. 36A and 36C. We have a motion to remove 26A 
36A and 36C, are there concurrences? Okay, those are removed. Anyone else? Mr. Mayor. Mr. White. I'd like to remove item 37A. Concur. Okay. Anyone else? All right, hearing that, I entertain a motion. Second. We moved by Dr. Aldridge, and I believe that was Mr. White for the second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed. The consent agenda is approved as amended with 26A, 36A, 36C, and 37A removed, and we'll consider those in their normal sequence. Next item is 7A, public hearing for a bar and grill liquor license application filed with the city clerk's office for Westby Edge LLC, doing business as Westby Edge LLC, 714 West 20th Street, Cheyenne, Wyoming. All right, at this time we'll open a public hearing and open it to the public if they'd like to speak on this application for a bar and grill license for Westby Edge LLC. You don't have to, Misha, but if you want to, we'd love to get a report. Mayor and council members, um, we're continuing to move along, um, hoping to open September, maybe late September of this year. And um, because we didn't get the liquor license, we're going to go forward with the bar and grill license and modify our business model if the council grants us that license. Um, I think the the council has heard at length about our, our project. Um, the the changes are obviously that we're going to try to modify our hours to be open during lunch, so that we can um, hopefully get more um, lunch business. Try to sell more food during that time. Um, maybe shorten our hours in the evening. And obviously we won't be able to have the, the package liquor store at the front. We won't be able to open as soon as we would have liked, um, but we will continue to have the event space and the bar and grill and just focus on that 60-40 split. We have submitted our application to the health department and they are walking us through the requirements for the kitchen, but we have everything on order. We're, we're in good shape. Thank you, Misha. So if there are no questions. Just that we wish you luck, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there anyone else in the audience like to speak to this application for a bar and grill liquor license? Hearing none, how about from the governing body? Hearing none, the purpose of the public hearing has been met and I'll assign this item to the finance committee. Next item is 7B, public hearing for a microbrewery liquor license application filed with the city clerk's office for West B. Edge LLC, doing business as West B. Edge LLC, 714 West 20th Street, Cheyenne, Wyoming. And we'll open the public hearing for this item. And Misha, we can just say ditto. Okay. <laughs> so we'll ditto for that. So there'll be, uh, in addition to the bar and grill, we'll have a microbrewery license. Is there anyone else in the audience like to speak to that? Hearing none, how about from the governing body? Hearing none, the purpose of the public hearing has been met, and this item will also go to the Finance Committee. Next item is 7C, public hearing to receive comments and input for the Heinz and the whole urban renewal plan and project as required by Wyoming statute, pursuant to Wyoming statute 15-9-109. All right, uh, we'll open this public hearing and have a brief staff report. Yes, good evening, Honorable Mayor, members of the council. My name is Mark Christensen, a planner in the Planning and Development Department. The item before you is the Heinz and the Whole Urban Renewal Plan and Project. The legal description for the project area includes Lot 8, Block 390 of the original city, which is the Heinz Building, and then Lot 1, Block 1 of Cheyenne Leeds Lincoln Way, which is the property that is commonly referred to as the Whole. While the exact redevelopment is yet to be determined, the City of Cheyenne will utilize its urban renewal powers to aid the redevelopment with the remediation of any potential environmental contaminants, upgrades to necessary public improvements, and it will also set the framework for property acquisition through Wyoming Statute 15-9-114. However, it is noted that the URA, the Urban Renewal Authority, and the Planning Commission recommended removing any references to eminent domain condemnation in Wyoming Statute 15-9-114.
The plan conforms to Wyoming Statutes 15-9-110 as it does not propose relocating families. It conforms to Plan Cheyenne. It gives due consideration to park and recreation areas and provides opportunities for redevelopment by private enterprise through the creation of a TIF. The URA Urban Renewal Authority heard the proposed plan and project on May 12th, 2020 and recommended approval as presented by staff subject to modifying the plan and project document to remove references to condemnation. The Planning Commission heard the item at their May 16th, 2022 meeting and also recommended approval as presented by staff subject to the same modifications. With that, I'm available for any questions and I wanted to add a point of clarification in the memo that was presented to council. It noted that this item would be going to public services committee on June 7th. Um, the correct placement for that would be with finance committee on June 6th. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone in the audience like to speak to this um, public hearing for the Heinz and the whole urban renewal plan and project? Please come forward. Or you'll have to push the button so the green light turns on. State your name and speak strictly into the microphone for us, if you would. Thank you, Mayor Collins, members of the council, Ms. Boster, uh, <clears throat> Alex Davison with Patton and Davison Attorneys. Uh, we're at 1920 Thumbs Avenue, and I appear here tonight on behalf of the current owner of the Heinz Building, uh, Giant Development Partners. Uh, I've been working with those folks for quite some time, and I was asked to take a look at the plan and uh, share my thoughts with them. And they uh, suggested and asked that I would come and share them with you as well. Uh, I recognize that uh, this is not an action item. This is a public input item. And that's the context within which I tender this information. So um, <clears throat> when I first got this, uh, the first thing that struck my attention was that we had two properties that were uh, really uh, dramatically different. Uh, one property uh, basically had nothing on it except rubble, uh, and the other was the historic Heinz building. Uh, a review of the records available show that the Heinz uh, building right now, according to the latest assessment, uh, and we all know kind of what that means, uh, is being assessed at uh, well, a fair market value of about 1.62 million. Um, the whole is being assessed at 33,000. Uh, what that translates into is that uh, the Heinz building is uh, being valued by the assessor uh, at a, a value of about $185 per square foot. Uh, the whole is $2.81 per square foot. That means that the Heinz property per square foot is worth approximately 6,000% more than the whole. Uh, the Heinz pays about 14,000 in taxes. Uh, the whole pays $290 in taxes. So there's a, a huge disparity and we have two separate properties that are really entirely different. And I, when I saw that, I thought, well, something strange is going on here. Um, dug a little deeper and I learned that the ownership, of course, we, ours is private ownership, but uh, the whole is apparently uh, owned by an entity, uh, which I'm sure the, the council and the mayor are familiar with it, uh, is, you know, acts in tandem with the city on various projects. So I looked at the report and I discovered that the blight determination was far more heavily weighted in favor of the whole than it was the Heinz. So the value was with the Heinz, the blight determination was with the whole. Um, added to these discoveries uh, was a representation uh, from my client which you know, I don't know firsthand, but the representation that um, information had been tendered by the city that um, you know, if you don't accept our price, then we'll exercise eminent domain 
and uh, we'll take the property that way. So all of this is starting to add up to something that is really very troubling. And there are a number of concerns here uh, with regard to the way this has been approached, but I only wanna highlight two. The first, and I'll try to be as brief as possible. The first thing is this process, uh, to my understanding, has not, uh, has not been characterized by a great deal of collaborative effort. It started last year sometime in the summer, and uh, I, I don't know how much the, the property owners were kept in the know on this. I know we just recently, a couple of weeks ago, got our formal notice. So um, I don't think there's been a lot of give and take in development of the plan with the private property owner, and that's a concern. Um, and I think it ought to be remedied. There's probably the chief concern by the private property owners here, the Shine Development Partners, is uh, there's a significant concern with the effect that this um, language that is in the plan citing uh, eminent domain, and it uh, sort of sounds like it's presumed. It says, once condemnation proceedings move forward, the city of Cheyenne, da, 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 da. That sounds like that's going to happen. And, uh, you know, we're, we, we think this has an effect on our property value. We think it has an effect on how difficult it is to sell the property or develop the property. Uh, that's probably our chief concern, and that's been expressed to the URA and also the Planning Commission, uh, both of which recommended deletion uh, of that and a commitment on the part of the city to not exercise eminent domain frivolously and perhaps not at all. So in summary, uh, you know, we just, we feel that the condemnation of the property is, is not the appropriate approach, that it, um, it disadvantages the private property owner. And moreover, it's in derogation of the interests of lenders who are present in this project and investors uh, because they're cut off by eminent domain. They don't get paid unless there's enough money. Um, and that, of course, has a, a really detrimental effect on my client because they haven't paid their bills or they have to figure out how they're going to. Um, property owners in the city and any other interested parties really need to seek to work in, in, in concert on this and make this thing move forward in a positive way. Um, at this point, uh, the owners are not sure that declaring the Heinz building to be blighted uh, is actually correct uh, based on the statements in the, in the plan. Uh, it, it appears more to be an attempt to justify the use of the eminent domain power to take the Heinz. Now we're very knowledgeable or cognizant, I guess, of the TIF programs. We're, we're still trying to figure out the projections to see how that affects things. Uh, but at this time, uh, you know, we're just not in a position to give our wholehearted support to the report. Uh, we, we would love to have a little more leeway in time to work with the city and to work with the planning department uh, so that we're more comfortable with where this is going. Uh, as right now, uh, it seems to have come upon us uh, as kind of an avalanche. So we, we trust you will give some, some consideration to opening the doors to more discussion on this uh, and try to reach a meaningful uh, consensus, I guess. Uh, and, and we trust that you will seriously consider the motions passed by URA and the Planning Commission and uh, take, take their interests and their, their input to heart and, and uh, stay away from this idea of, of forcing uh, the, the issue by the use of eminent domain. Uh, by the way, um, I spoke with uh, the principal of my client uh, just before I came over here, and he wanted me to 
give uh, all the council people and the mayor, and especially Mr. Christensen uh, and his team, an open invitation to come and view the inside of the Heinz, uh, because you're going to find that it is remarkable. Uh, painting, windows, floors, walls. Uh, you have to see the inside, not just the outside. And I know some of you have been through it. But if you haven't been through it in the last six to nine months, uh, there's more work that's been done. I um, want to close with just uh, a couple of thoughts on the plan itself. And it, it, it's from the page five that deals with uh, exercising uh, condemnation proceedings. I looked in vain for justification. What I found was assertions. The current condition of the Heinz building, it says, is detrimental to the health, safety, and welfare of the city of Cheyenne. That's, that's an assertion. That's a conclusion. There isn't any evidence in this report to support that. That's drawn out of the statute so that eminent domain can be used. It goes on, the risk I'm sorry, um, the building will fall into a further state of disrepair and may be cost prohibitive to restore. That tells me somebody didn't look inside this building, at least not recently. It, it also begs the question, do we have something from contractors to support this? As an architect looked at the building, as an engineer deemed it in such a state of disrepair that it's at risk of completely falling down. So this is a historic building. It's very dear to our hearts, all of us in Cheyenne. But there's a right way to do this. And uh, our, our hope is that we can find that right way. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your comments. Anyone else in the audience like to speak to this item? Hearing none, how about from the governing body? Hearing none, the purpose of the public hearing has been met. Next item is number 7D, public hearing to receive comments and input for the 15th Street Corridor Renewal Plan and Project as required by Wyoming statute, pursuant to Wyoming statute 15-9-109. All right, Mr. Christensen. Good evening, Honorable Mayor, members of the council. My name is Mark Christensen, a planner in the Planning and Development Department. The item before you is the 15th Street Corridor Urban Renewal Plan and Project. This plan and project area includes all of blocks 412, 413, 414 of original city. So that's generally between O'Neill, or excuse me, Reed Avenue and Thomes, and then lots 12 through 22 of block 415, 416, and 417 of the original city, which is generally between Thomes and Capitol. And this is between Lincoln Way and the 15th Street right of way. While the exact redevelopment is yet to be determined, the city will utilize its urban renewal powers to aid the redevelopment of several of the properties with remediation of environmental contaminants, building rehabilitation, targeted building demolition, and upgrades to necessary public improvements. The city plans to use tax increment financing enabled by Wyoming State Statute 15-9-120 to aid in the completion of these objectives. The plan and project conforms to Wyoming Statute 15-9-110 as it does not propose relocating families. It conforms to Plan Cheyenne. It gives due consideration to park and recreational areas and provides opportunities for redevelopment by private enterprise through the creation of a TIF. The Urban Renewal Authority heard the proposed plan and project on May 12, 2022 and recommended approval as presented by staff. The Planning Commission also heard the item at their May 16, 2022 meeting and also recommended approval as presented by staff. Again, this item will go to Finance Committee on June 6th rather than the Public Services Committee meeting as the memo indicated. And with that, I'm available for any questions. Thank you, sir. Any questions from for staff? Dr. Aldridge. Uh, thank you, Mayor Collins. Uh, through you to Mr. Christensen, I'm just curious as to, I believe you said the final street was um, O'Neill or Thomes. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just wondering why we didn't go all the way to 
um, bent or to Snyder. I, I guess I was hoping that we were going to try and encapsulate the pump house, that whole area. Um, apologies for that. So the it goes down to the half block at Thomes from Thomes to Capitol, and then Thomes to the Reed Avenue right of way is all between that entire block between Lincoln Way and 15th Street. Um, we did not include the pump house just because it was not included in this version of the blight study. Uh, to include it in a URA project, we'd have to include it in the blight study, um, which we do currently have that in draft form. We're just trying to do more public outreach on that component. Great, thank you. Any other questions for staff? Mr. Mayor, Mr. Labor. So, Mark, are you saying that there is a blight study going on in the pump house? Is that what I understood you just say? Mr. Christensen. Mr. Mayor, through you to Councilman Laybourne, the, the blight study, the staff is currently working on an expanded blight study, um, which would encompass more areas of the community. Um, this is currently in draft form and we do have it in our office. Uh, we haven't brought it forward to the Urban Renewal Authority because we're trying to do more outreach with it. <laughs> Thank you. I did see some of those other sites in your uh, review here, but my question is about the pump house. Is it being considered for a blight study? Yes, Chair. Mr. Mayor, through you, it would be um, considered in this expanded blight study. Thank you. Anyone else? How about anyone else in the audience want to speak to this 15th Street urban renewal plan and project? Hearing none, governing body? Hearing none, the purposes of the public hearing has been met. Next item is number eight, ordinance on third reading, amending section 10.52.030, parking not to obstruct traffic of chapter 10.52, stopping standing and parking generally of title 10 vehicles and traffic of the code of the city of Cheyenne, Wyoming. All right, is there anyone in the audience like to speak to this item? Hearing none, Dr. Rennie. Mr. Mayor, the recommendation of the Public Service Committee is to approve on third and final reading and I would so move. Seconded by Mr. Johnson. Mr. Mayor. Dr. Rainey. I'd like to move to amend by substitute, substitute dated May 3rd, 2022. Seconded by Mr. Johnson. Um, let's go to the audience and see if anybody wants to speak to this amendment. I believe the amendment gets rid of the words trailer and, um, and just includes the words vehicle um, in the description of uh, the vehicles that can be uh, on the street. So is there anyone in the audience like to speak to that? How about from the governing body? Mr. Mayor. Dr. Rennie. At Public Service Committee before the most recent one, there was a lot of discussion about um, storage pods and, and uh, RVs and we even amended it to add um, alleyways because we were worried about obstructions for sanitation. In the subsequent two um, two weeks, then we did learn that um, there was already an ordinance that addressed things in alleyways. Um, we also learned that Engineer Cobb was working on an ordinance to address um, storage pods and at least have permits for those. And so we had thrown a lot into this ordinance thinking we needed to address things that were already either had already been taken care of or in the process of being taken care of. So the substitute essentially goes back to the very original form of the ordinance. Thank you. Anyone else from the governing body? Hearing none, we're on the amendment. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? The amendment passes and we're back on the main motion. Uh, any comments from members of the governing body? Hearing none, Madam Mr. Premier. Mr. Laybourne. Well, we did have some discussion and uh, concerns were raised in committee about uh, how effective this would be and how, what parts of the community would be uh, more uh, likely to have this be applied. And I just wanted to note that in Ward 1, uh, in the avenues uh, section of town, those are narrower streets. And then when you get over on the west side in the courts, and there are several uh, streets there that are very narrow, uh, this application is going to—it's going to really help people there to be able to uh, resolve issues. And certainly, as the testimony and committee noted, uh, this is also for fire, sanitation, and other city uh, efforts. So it isn't that we're trying to 
reach out and do something that isn't really necessary or that has broad application across the city. But in these specific situations, I think it'll be very useful. Thank you. Dr. Aldrich. Uh, Mayor Collins, for you. I just wanted to um, say that we this initial idea came to us uh, from a constituent who attended a council and coffee. And um, the primary concern is really about public safety and being able to get, as my colleague from Ward 1 noted, emergency vehicles such as fire trucks, uh, ambulances and things through some of those more narrow uh, streets. And that can be really difficult when there's not sufficient space. So um, this is definitely, definitely the intent here was public safety. Thank you. Jennifer, I see you have a hand raised. We do. We have um, Councilman Seagrave with his hand raised. Thank you. Mr. Seagrave. Mr. Mayor, I'm going to speak in opposition to this. Um, first of all, there's very few blocks in the city that are going to be affected. Second of all, we had testimony from uh, Chief Francisco that this will not be an active ticketing situation. It will only be enforced if someone calls the police. So the thought that this is going to open up narrow streets for the uh, fire department, police department, et cetera, to get down prior to is just false. Uh, it's not going to happen. I really don't see a need for this. Um, I think we're, we're creating an ordinance looking for a problem. So I will be a no vote. Thank you. Mr. Seagrid, anyone else? Yes, sir, when you're ready. Mr. Johnson. I guess um, to kind of counterbalance that argument, this ordinance actually already existed. Um, the only uh, okay, can I get you talking your microphone to people in the back? I can try to move it as close as I can. There you go. Thank you. Okay. So, on ten five two zero three zero, as Michelle has stated, this was brought up um, at a coffee and council from a constituent um, to focus on the street size instead of the actual vehicles. So when you uh, when I looked at ten five two zero three zero. It basically said as measured from center line or center line pavement marking, we haven't done pavement markings in most of our residential streets in almost 40 some years. And so that was looked at as a loophole that if I was to um, say have a violation against me, that I would be the person that would go to court and say there's no uh, center line pavement marking on my road. And so therefore I was not in violation of the ordinance. And so this is basically clearing up a loophole. When I worked with the community service officers in regards to this, this is basically a data collection test where we can see how much this is actually going to be enforced. Although Councilman Seagrave expressed at a committee as well as tonight that he doesn't, or he has not heard of any complaints um, in regards to this, I get several. Um, the, not only from coffee and council, but people writing me on a daily basis. And so this is something that we're looking at. And this is basically a data collection effort uh, to have the CSO see how effective this ordinance can be applied. And then we will probably um, have recommendations coming for uh, looking for other loopholes throughout the existing city code uh, to remedy in the future. And that's what was the impetus behind this. Dr. Ray? Mr. Mayor, we have several ordinances that fall under nuisance and the only time they're enforced is when there's a complaint. Um, you know, one example is snow removal off the of sidewalks and there we can think of countless others that we've had to deal with. So this, this ordinance is really, you know, yes, it's only gonna be enforced when there's a complaint made, but by the same token, that's how the majority of our nuisance ordinances are handled. So this is really no different than many that we already have on the books. Anyone else in the company body like to? Uh... Mr. Mayor? Yes. Tom Seagrave has his hand raised again. Mr. Seagrave. Mr. Mayor, I'm happy to see that other uh, councilmen agree that this won't be enforced unless, uh, unless someone calls the police to enforce it. Um, the thought that this is going to create uh, wider openings for, for emergency vehicles is false. If that's the reason we're doing this, as pointed out earlier, this is not the reason to do it because it's not going to happen. This will be after the fact. Someone will get a ticket after the house burns down. So uh, again, I'm a, I'm a no vote on this. Thank you. Any other comments from members of the governing body? All right, hearing none, Madam Clerk, would you take roll? 
Mr. Escobel. Aye. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Laborn. Aye. Dr. Rennie. Yes. Mr. Roybal. Yes. Mr. Seagrave. No. Mr. White. Yes. Dr. Aldridge. Yes. And Mayor Collins. Yes. The ordinance is approved on third and final reading as it's amended. Next item is number nine, ordinance on third reading, amending section 10.52.230, downtown construction maintenance worker parking in an established timed parking zone of chapter 10.52, stopping standing and parking generally of title 10, vehicles and traffic of the code of the city of Cheyenne, Wyoming. All right, is there anyone in the audience like to speak to this amendment to our parking rules? Hearing none, may I have a motion, Mr. White. Mr. Mayor, the recommendation of the Finance Committee is to approve on third and final reading, and I so move. Second. Seconded by Mr. Escobel. Comments from members of the governing body? Comments? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, would you take roll? Mr. Escobel. Aye. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Laborn. Yes. Dr. Rennie. Yes. Mr. Roybal. Yes. Mr. Seagrave. No. Mr. White. Yes. Dr. Aldridge. Yes. Mayor Collins. Yes. The ordinance is approved on third and final reading with Mr. Seagrave voting no. Next num next item is number 10, ordinance on second reading, annexing to the city of Cheyenne, Wyoming, land located northwest of the intersection of Christensen Road and Pershing Boulevard. All right. Is there anyone in the audience like to speak to this annexation before us? Hearing none, Mr. or Dr. Rennie. Mr. Mayor, the recommendation of Public Service Committee is to approve on second reading, and I would so move. Second. Seconded by Mr. White. Comments from members of the governing body on the annexation. Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The annexation is approved on second reading. Or number 11, ordinance on second reading, amending the official zoning map of the city of Cheyenne, changing the zoning classification from County A1 agriculture and rural residential to MR medium density residential for land located northwest of the intersection of Christensen Road and Pershing Boulevard. All right, is there anyone in the audience like to speak to the zone change? Hearing none, Dr. Rennie. Mr. Mayor, recommendation of public service committee is to approve on second reading and I would so move. Seconded by President Roybal. Comments from members of the governing body on the zone change. Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The zone change is approved on second reading. Next item is number 12, ordinance on second reading. Annexing to the city of Cheyenne, Wyoming, land located north of Mistle Drive, east of I-25. All right, is there anyone in the audience want to speak to this annexation? Hearing none, Dr. Rennie. Mr. Mayor, the Public Service Committee heard this item also, and their recommendation is to approve on second reading, and I would so move. Second. Seconded by Mr. Johnson. Comments from members of the governing body on the annexation. Mr. Mayor, this one's, if I may, this one's kind of interesting. For some reason, sometime in the past, the old 84 Lumber Building was, half of it's in the city, half of it's without. So this is just to bring the entire parcel into the city. Love it. Anyone else in the governing body? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? This annexation is also approved on second reading. Next item is number 13, ordinance on second reading, amending the official zoning map of the city of Cheyenne, changing the zoning classification from county LI light industrial to LI light industrial for land located north of Missile Drive and east of I-25. All right, anyone in the audience like to speak to the zone change? Dr. Rainey. Mr. Mayor, this is a companion to item 12 and the, rec and the Public Services Committee recommended approval on second reading. And I would so move. Second. Seconded by Mr. Johnson. Comments from members of the governing body on the zone change. Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The zone change is approved on second reading. Number 14, ordinance second reading, annexing to the city of Cheyenne, Wyoming, land located north of High Plains Road, west of I-25. All right, one more annexation for the audience. Anyone want to speak to it? Hearing none, Dr. Rennie. The recommendation of the Public Service Committee is to approve, is to approve on second reading, and I would move to approve. Second. Seconded by Mr. Johnson. Comments from members of the governing body. Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 
Aye. Aye. Those opposed? The ordinance is approved on second reading. Number 15, ordinance second reading, amending the official zoning map of the city of Cheyenne, changing the zoning classification from Swan Ranch PUD unit development to city Swan Ranch PUD plan unit development. Ordinance number 3989 for land located north of High Plains Road, west of I-25. Hopefully the audience is figuring out we have an annexation and we got to change the zone to city zone. So we're in the process of that. Anyone in the audience like to speak to the zone change for this annexation? Hearing none, Dr. Rennie. Mr. Mayor, the recommendation of the Public Service Committee is to approve on second reading, and I would so move. Second. Seconded by Mr. Johnson. Comments from members of the governing body? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The zone change is approved on second reading. Next item is number 16, ordinance on second reading, amending the official zoning map of the city of Cheyenne, changing the zoning classification from MUB mixed use business emphasis to CB community business for land located northeast of the intersection of Delrange Boulevard and Ridge Road. Anyone in the audience like to speak to this zone change? I believe it's changing the zoning for the McDonald's there on the corner of Delrange and Ridge Road. Hearing none, Dr. Rennie. Mr. Mayor, the recommendation of the Public Service Committee is to approve on second reading, and I would so move. Second. Seconded by Mr. Johnson. Comments from members of the governing body. Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? The zone change is approved on second reading. Next item is number 17, ordinance on second reading, amending the official zoning map of the city of Cheyenne, changing the zoning classification from CB community business to MR medium density residential for land located southeast of the intersection of Omaha Road and Pine Drive. All right, we're back to the audience. We have a piece of property where they want to be able to have somebody live. So we had to change it from community business to zone for uh, residential, but anybody like to speak to that? Hearing none, Dr. Rennie. Mr. Mayor. The recommendation of the Public Service Committee is to approve on second reading. I would move to approve. Second. Seconded by Mr. Johnson. Comments from members of the governing body. Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The yeah, zone change is approved on second reading. Next item is number 18, ordinance on second reading, vacating a portion of good, the Goodnight Trail Roundabout, Sweetgrass, First Filing, City of Cheyenne, Laramie County, Wyoming, located along Goodnight Trail between College Drive and Murray Road. Anyone in the audience want to speak to this vacation? All right, hearing none, Dr. Rennie. Mr. Mayor, the recommendation of the Public Service Committee is to approve on second reading, and I would so move. Seconded by Mr. Johnson. Comments from members of the governing body. Mr. Mayor. Dr. Rennie. When I read this, this was really odd. I thought, why are we doing that? The question is, there are two roundabouts in Sweetgrass that were going to be joined by a road in between them. The development is developers decided not to build that road. Um, so they need to vacate the eastern portion of one roundabout and the western portion of another where the road would have connected. Absolutely. So that addresses 18 and 19 are essentially the same, same issue. Exactly. Anyone else in the governing body? Hearing on all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The vacation is approved on second reading. Excuse me, next time. Number, number 19, ordinance on second reading, vacating a portion of the Sweetgrass Drive roundabout, Sweetgrass First Filing, City of Cheyenne, Laramie County, Wyoming located along Sweetgrass Sweet Drive between College Drive and Murray Road. This is the other half of Dr. Rennie's explanation. Anyone in the audience want to speak to this? Hearing none, Dr. Rennie. The recommendation of the Public Service Committee is to approve on second reading, and I would so move. Seconded by Mr. Johnson. <laughs> Comments from members of the governing body? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The vacation is approved on second reading. Next item is number 20, ordinance on second reading, creating chapter 13.28, urban stormwater quality management and discharge control, public services of the code of the city of Cheyenne, Wyoming. All right, is there anyone in the audience like to speak to this? This one's a pretty thick document, so uh, anyone? Hearing none, Dr. Rennie. Mayor, the recommendation of public service committee is to approve on second reading. I would move to approve on second reading. Second. <laughs> Seconded by Mr. White. Comments from members of the governing body. All right, hearing none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? That was a very busy public service meeting. 
Next item is number 21, ordinance on second reading, approving and establishing revised water and sewer rates, tap and system development fees, administrative fees, service charges and penalties, and septic and commercial waste dump rates as recommended by the Port of U Board of Public Utilities. Mr. Brooks. Yes, Mr. Mayor, City Council. Could you Brett. bring that microphone up so people yeah. can hear you? How's that go. better? Oh yeah. Uh, Brad Brooks, Director for City of Cheyenne Board of Public Utilities. Uh, what you have before you is uh, our annual uh, ordinance approving our revised water sewer rates, uh, our system development fees, administrative fees, charges and penalties, and our, our fees for septic commercial waste dump rates. Um, these have all been analyzed this last year as I shared at the, the uh, finance committee meeting here a week ago. Um, we had FCS who is a consultant here approximately two years ago now. Doesn't seem like it's been that long, but it has been a while. Uh, they actually looked at doing a rate study for us. It was a very uh, complete, elaborate study of all of our fees, all of our charges, our modes in, of operation. And out of that came um, recommendation to do what's called a cost <coughs> of service um, increase. Cost of service is basically instead of pre uh, spreading the cost of increase that we need to make over everybody evenly, we basically look at the specific type of user, whether it be residential, uh, multifamily, commercial, industrial, and we basically applied the fees for what it costs for that specific service to that specific user, and that's what we're recommending. Um, that is what is more common around the country today. Uh, what we're seeing is more fair, fair and equitable. Um, so out of that, um, our study uh, basically came, the increase is approximately about a 5%. Uh, that is an average. There is some that are higher, some that were actually lower, some that actually we didn't adjust at all. And that basically came out of that cost of service analysis. Um, just want to remind everybody, I didn't mention this the other day, but just so you know, our rates uh, and the fees that we use are basically what we used to uh, operate and to maintain all of our infrastructure. We have approximately a little over a thousand miles of infrastructure in the ground. So if you can just imagine that between water and sewer lines from our lakes, reservoirs, uh, services we have here in the community. And uh, the value of that, um, is well over $600 million. So there's a lot of infrastructure to take care of and that's what we use these rates for. Um, on this rate study, basically what we do is we take and look and project our projects out for the next five years. Uh, we look and anticipate what revenues we think that we'll have in. Um, and then basically we try to figure out what we're gonna need loans and grants that are available because certain projects it makes more sense for us to go to the state to get grant funding and get loaned through the slip board. Um, then we come up with that difference and we determine what rate increase do we need to apply to try to make those happen. Um, I will tell you this year when we looked at it, we had a lot more things on the table than we originally planned. And so we actually cut quite a few projects to get back to where we felt like a rate increase that would be justifiable and acceptable to the public. Um, with that, FCS is the consultant that did that. We have also are gonna keep them on for the next five years. Typically, we've not done uh, rate studies about every five years. We're gonna keep them on over the next five years so that we can look at it each year. Because as you know, uh, with revenues, things that happen in our community, a lot of things change from year to year. And so we wanna stay up on that rather than not look at it for four or five years and have to make you know maybe larger changes. Um, this is something that was requested by council several years past and some that have been on council for a while will remember that. But um, we used to kind of come um, more sporadic where maybe we didn't have rate increases for a while and then we hit council with a real large increase. A lot of council members recommended that we come before you on a yearly basis. We look at some of the indexes that are around. I can share some of those with you so that we base our fees more on a, a more regular basis and try to stick to a more common um, regular increase rather than something real dramatic every three, four, five years. And when we did compare some of the, the indexes that we look at, um, there's the index called the Bureau of Labor Statistics Consumer Price Index, and it's for all urban consumers, water and sewer maintenance for the calendar year, and these were from last year because that's the data we have uh, 
data on was 4.2%. The Wyoming cost of living index for the Southeast region for the second quarter of 2021 was 7.2. And another one that we look at is called the engineering news record construction conduct, uh, uh, cost index for calendar year 2021 was 8.9. I can tell you I've done these for a few years and given those indexes and I, I in the past, I cannot remember a lot of those indexes ever going above 4%. So it kind of tells you what's happening in our market when we're getting some that are almost up to nine. So with that, Frank Strong is with me. Frank's gonna give just a couple quick updates on some of the major, major changes to some of our fees. Thank you, Brad, uh, through you, Mayor. Um, just a quick highlight on some of the uh, uh, rate resolutions. Um, there's five or six of them. 01 is really what establishes our water rates. And the big change you'll see there is the shift to the cost of service. So you won't see a consistent 5% increase across the board. The other item that was changed, there used to be a separate uh, line item for multifamily. Uh, multifamily, eight units and less will now be billed as residential units. More than eight will be commercial. Um, resolution 02 is sewer. Once again, you'll see a very similar thing. We're switching to cost of service. Some go up more than others, some stay flat. We're just trying to do the uh, proper uh, appropriation of the rates. Uh, excuse me, for three is our system development fees. And this one has been greatly simplified. We used to have a separate commercial and residential system development fee for three quarter inch, one inch, so on. We used to have a breakdown for multifamily. Everything now is just based off the meter size because that's the, the demand that we placed on our system. So that's been greatly simplified. We also eliminated pump station fees. They've all just been incorporated into the SDF fees for simplification and ease of calculations. Um, the next resolution is our administration fees. This is pretty much just went up 5% across the board with the addition of one new fee, and that's associated with replats that happen in subdivisions and the impact to the existing water taps and the process we have to go through to, to reconcile all that. Um, the final resolution is our septic fee resolution. And once again, that just went up 5%. Thank you guys. Anybody on the governing body want to ask staff a question? Appreciate you. Anyone else in the audience like to speak to this uh, proposed uh, rate change? All right, hearing none. That would be Mr. White. Mr. Mayor, the recommendation of the Finance Committee is to approve on second reading, and I so move. Seconded by Mr. Escobel. Comments from members of the governing body. Mr. Mayor? Yes, ma'am. We do have Councilman Seagrave with his hand raised. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, through you, Secret. I'm one of those council people in years past that, that encouraged the uh, Board of Public Utilities and, and quite frankly, all city uh, departments to come to us on an annual basis rather than waiting multiple years and taking large increases. Uh, I'm also aware that none of us like to pass on rate increases. But as complicated as our water and sewer system is, and I believe most of us understand that the cost of building right now in our community and the country actually, um, I'm, I'm actually pleased to hear that we're only looking at roughly an average of 5% rate increase. It certainly could be much more than that. So again, I'm, I'm not crazy about raising rates, nobody is. But I certainly uh, don't want to see our system deteriorate. There is a community in the state of Wyoming that has uh, been in the news lately that, that has serious, serious um, problems with their water and sewer because they have not maintained it over the years. So I'm in favor of this, although I don't like it, but uh, certainly I'm going to uh, support it today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Segrave. I remember I was on the governing body with you and we hadn't had a, an increase in a large number of years. And I think it was in the 20 percentile, 25% rate increase. And that's when we said, that's just not the way it needs to be. So asked our departments to come back to us on an annual basis and make smaller increments. That one was a tough one to swallow back in the day. Um, Dr. Aldridge. Mayor Collins, for you. I just wanted to um, 
uh, echo my colleague from Ward 2, and I don't think that any of us uh, looks forward to rate increases, but in watching what's been happening in some of our communities around Wyoming and with some of the changes in requirements through um, the Environmental Protection Agency and knowing that water is really in the West, one of our limiting factors for growth as well as um, really a precious commodity. Um, I agree that taking these rate increases in smaller increments is probably our best uh, approach. And so for that reason, I'll be supporting this tonight. Anyone else in the governing body? Yes, sir, when you're ready. Mr. Johnson. I don't see anything in the document. I knew I brought this up prior to the pandemic. And with our county pocket discussions, is there gonna be something that's brought up in 2023 in regards to taps uh, for when we try to bring county pockets in? Because I know that was one of the things that URA brought up was um, blighted areas due to infrastructure that they didn't have the sewer and water and everything we were worried about you know, what the cost was currently uh, for individuals to be brought into the city. Is this gonna be a future discussion for the rate increase to 2023 from this county pocket discussion? Mr. Johnson, I know I've spoke with Mr. Bloom and we are working on a model ordinance right now on how we would uh, bring county pockets into the city limits. Uh, we do have one little situation and that is when we bring somebody into the city, they're grandfathered for all of their uses. And so there may be some question about what we can and cannot do in that regard. And we're working on that as we speak. Thank you. Anyone else in the governing body? All right, hearing none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? This ordinance is approved on second reading. Next item is number 22, ordinance on second reading, appropriating monies for the city of Cheyenne, Wyoming for various purposes in conducting municipal government of said city and fixing the amount of general and special taxes as part of the revenue required to meet the said appropriation all for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2022 and ending June 30th, 2023. We've been working on this budget for dang near six months now, and so it's nice to see uh, we're almost at the end of this process, and so we're here on second reading. Is there anyone in the audience like to speak to um, the city's budget? All right, hearing none, President Roybal. Mr. Mayor, the recommendation of the Committee of the Whole is to approve on second reading, and I so move. Second. Seconded by Mr. White. Comments from members of the governing body? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? This ordinance is approved on second reading. Next item is number 23, ordinance on first reading, amending the official zoning map of the city of Cheyenne, changing the zoning classification from MUB, MUR, LI, and CB to MUB with the UU overlay for land located in the West Edge District. Just what public service needed another item, but we'll send it there anyways. Next item is number 26, Resolution to name a triangle shaped parcel of real property located at the intersection of Randall Avenue, West 32nd Street and Day Avenue, Bill Du Bois Memorial Park. All right, is there anyone in the audience like to speak to the naming of a triangle uh, after Mr. Bill Du Bois? Hearing none, Dr. Rennie. Mr. Mayor, the recommendation of the Public Service Committee is to adopt the resolution and I would so move. Second. Seconded by Mr. White. Comments from members of the governing body. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Laborn. This is a pretty unique but important item here in terms of recognizing one of our community leaders and who had a really unique relationship to that area. He actually grew up in some of the houses, well, in one of the houses that was there, but there were several houses in that area that uh, his grandfather uh, designed. And of course there are many buildings throughout Cheyenne that uh, uh, his grandfather designed and Bill certainly was involved in many uh, civic activities. And really what's impressive to me is how the neighborhood and the community stepped forward to gather the uh, signatures for that uh, qualifying designation. And they also have raised um, a significant amount of money for signage and some improvements to the park. And I, I wanna thank the Parks Department for the effort that they're putting in. I was over there this afternoon and uh, they're getting ready to fix the irrigation system. And later on in the summer, uh, there's gonna be a celebration 
and uh, some of the supporters there wanted me to make sure that everyone uh, knew that later on we're going to have a, a party over there and that will be uh, certainly appropriate and uh, I think that this is uh, an example of uh, neighborhood preservation as well as recognition of community leadership. Thank you. A party in the park sounds like fun. <laughs> Anyone else on the governing body? Mr. Mayor. Mr. White. Uh, I, I knew uh, Mr. Du Bois most of my life, had him as a teacher in high school, um, was a volunteer with him for at uh, Cheyenne Frontier Days for many years. I just really want to applaud um, the neighbors, the neighborhood around this area that really kind of spearheaded this effort uh, around the, the new naming policy that uh, the council adopted some time back. And um, just saddened, uh, if there's going to be a party at Bill Du Bois Park, I'm, I'm sad Mr. Du Bois isn't around to attend it because that's certainly one thing that uh, he enjoyed from time to time. And, uh, and I'm, I'm just uh, real pleased to be able to support this tonight. You know, it's amazing the uh, the neighborhood. Dr. Farr and his group got together and got the signatures. Uh, they've raised, I think, if I remember correctly, like eleven or twelve thousand dollars so far, and are still continuing to raise money to uh, to develop the park and the bench and the sign and all the things that go along with it. So uh, they really wanted to honor uh, their friend, and uh, I think it's a very appropriate thing. So looking forward to seeing that happen. Anyone else in the governing body? Yes, sir. Mr. Johnson. Bill was my friend as well, but as I've publicly stated on many occasions, I cannot vote to have any name change of a park until we actually have one named after a woman. So I will be not out of disrespect to Bill. I think he would understand exactly where I came from because he actually knew my personality traits. But until we actually have a park named after a woman, I have to vote no on every park name change. All right, anyone else? All right, hearing none, all those in favor of naming the park after Mr. Du Bois, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? The naming of the park is approved with Mr. Johnson voting no. Next item is 34D, contract between the City of Cheyenne and VSP Vision Care for group vision insurance benefits for city employees. All right, is there anyone in the audience like to speak to these, this contract between the City of Cheyenne and VSP Vision Care? Hearing you none, Mr. White. How about your microphone, sir? Apologize. There you go. Uh, the recommendation of the Finance Committee is to approve, and I so move. Seconded by Dr. Aldridge. Mr. Johnson, will you be declaring? Yeah. For the record, um, Mr. Johnson's conflicted and will abstain from this vote. Uh, any comments from members of the governing body? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nice. the uh, contract is approved with Mr. Johnson abstaining. Next item is 34E, development agreement between the City of Cheyenne and PKD, PKT Development LLC for two public capital improvement projects for the Del Range Boulevard roadway project and for the Whitney Road roadway and Del Range Boulevard intersection improvement project. I would normally send this to a committee, but I understand we saw this one under other items on the agenda. Uh, Dr. Rennie, do you have a motion? Public Service Committee reviewed this item. Um, therefore, it passes the provisions of Title II of the City Code. And Mr. Mayor, I would move to approve. Second. Seconded by Mr. White. All Mr. right, it's Mr. on. Mayor. If I could go to the audience real quick. Go ahead, Dr. Rennie, please. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to amend by substitute, and the substitute is dated May 23rd, 2022. Do you want to go walk us through with that? Well, let me let me get let me get a second first. Thank you. Seconded by Mr. Roybal. Mr. Mayor, the purpose is substitute. If you have your contract with you on top of page four, under seven B Romanet I and seven B Romanet II, we just had to um, put the correct percentages in there. So that's all that the change. All right. So let's go to the audience first of all. <coughs> Anybody want to talk about first of all the uh, the development agreement or the substitute? Anyone? Hearing none, we're back on the substitute for the governing body. Any comments on, from the governing body? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. 
Those opposed? All right, we're, we passed the substitute. We're back on the main motion. Comments? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The development agreement is approved as amended. Next item is 35B, renewal of contract number 6837 between the City of Cheyenne and Delta Dental for group dental insurance benefits for the city employees. You can tell we're at that time of year where we're changing on and starting all of our open enrollment again. So is there anyone want to speak to our Delta Dental contract? Hearing none, Mr. White. Mr. Mayor, the recommendation of the Finance Committee is to approve, and I would so move. Seconded by Dr. Aldridge. And again, Mr. Johnson, you'll be abstaining? All right. For the record? Okay, thank you. Uh, anyone on the, uh, the governing body want to speak to this contract? All right, hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. The contract is approved with Mr. Johnson abstaining. Next item is 36 a consideration of bid number E-25-22 for furnishing a professional audio reinforcement system for the City of Cheyenne Community Recreation and Events Department Civic Center Fund. All right. Is there anyone in the audience like to speak to our purchase of a sound system for the Civic Center? Hearing none, Mr. White. Mr. Mayor, the recommendation of the Finance Committee is to accept the bid from Brown Note Productions, Thornton, Colorado, in an amount not to exceed. $457,722, and I so move. Seconded by Dr. Aldridge. Comments from members of the governing body. Mr. Laybourne. Uh, Mr. Mayor, could we have an explanation from the uh, Mr. Sanchez, it appears to be? Mr. Sanchez, would it be you or the, the gentleman behind you better to answer this question? Mr. Mayor, I'll take a stab at it. There He's here if we have any other technical questions, and that is Andrew Hayes, our tech director. Uh, for the record, I am Jason Sanchez, Community Recreation and Events. Uh, the purpose of this purchase is, uh, believe it or not, the Civic Center does not own an audio system. We don't have our own sound system. We rent one for all the shows that we uh, bring into the Civic Center. We've spent uh, an average of about 125,000 annually renting. Um, and so this would give us an opportunity to own our own sound system, save those dollars in rental uh, fees, as well as charge it back to or rent it to some of our renters. So it um, has the potential to uh, reduce the, the cost uh, that we have at the Civic Center between $125,000 and $150,000. I'd stand for questions. Mr. Sanchez, could you walk them through where the revenue is coming from for this? Sure. Uh, the revenue for this, uh, we did qualify for a shuttered venues grant as well as ARPA funds. Um, and the amount of $1,583,906.92. And so those are the two funds we will uh, be utilizing for this purchase. Thank you. Did that help, Mr. Labor? Yes, I was wondering if we could have an explanation of uh, how that is going to be applied and uh, exactly what, is this the state of the art? Is this uh, something that, uh, how, did, how does it work? Mr. Mayor, I'm going to go ahead and turn this microphone over to our tech director, who is very excited to describe what we're purchasing. Andrew, thank you for being here. I appreciate the opportunity. Andrew Hayes, technical director, Cheyenne Civic, Cheyenne Civic Center. Um, Mr. Mayor, through you. A little bit nervous. This is my first time talking into this microphone, not the only microphone I've ever spoken into. But Mr. Laybourne, this is an amazing sound system that is designed for venues such as the Cheyenne Civic Center. They are venues that are 1,000 to 2,000 capacity venues. They're designed to make it so that we have the, it can complement the amazing acoustics within the venue. It is state of the art. The reason why we went with this particular type of thing, this particular sound system, so to speak, is that we have the opportunity to make it future proof. We are looking at a 15 to 20 year investment here, which is huge for the amount of money and the amount of potential income and the, the potential community development. In addition to that, the, uh, the characteristics of this system are so complex that we are looking at being able to do things that allow different elements of our, our organization to really thrive. 
So our booking team can say that we have this state of the art system and it makes people more relaxed. We have a better negotiation platform so that we can bring in the caliber of artists this community really wants to see. And we can continue that trend for 10, 15 to maybe 20 years. And it's a very exciting prospect to be on the plate. Can you tell he's excited? Yeah. <laughs> I am so excited. <laughs> I'm excited just listening to him, Mr. Laybourne. Well, and I certainly am excited as well. I think that I call this off the consent agenda because I think it's really important that people understand the effort that we're putting into the Civic Center. It was uh, a state-of-the-art facility many years ago, and we really didn't do some of the things that we could have and should have over time. And there's a number of other issues in terms of ADA, the restrooms, the seats, but uh, this is a really important step. And I think that uh, having that opportunity to attract the kind of shows that uh, people want to see today is, is a wonderful thing. So I'm very pleased that we were able to marshal these funds uh, from those sources and put this together because uh, I, I, I certainly don't uh, understand exactly what happens, but I do understand when we can uh, compete with any theater. And I'm, I'm glad to note the uh, fact that the, the excellent acoustics in that building um, are really what's special. Many, many of our guest artists comment on that. So uh, complimenting that is just a, a really good thing. Thank you. Mr. Mantri. Yes, sir. Thank you to all of council for this opportunity to, uh, to, I guess, make the game better. Andrew, when will we get this system? Uh, 180 days would be the soonest. Um, shipping and delivery delays across the world are going to dictate all of that, but we should see it in the uh, 100 to 180 to 300 day platform. Mr. Rebel. Um, through you, Mr. Chair. The, uh, the system, is it the $477,000 or $457,000? Is the system standalone or does it have to be installed? Mr. Mantri, Councilman Royal this was designed to be a mobile system with the idea that we still have the opportunity to renovate the Civic Center. And if we do, we need to host events elsewhere. And that's another element of the design factor that we put into play. And it might also be used in mobile, mobile situations such as Fridays on the Plaza that endure a great amount of shows that sometimes we have special artists that need a bigger PA yeah. and we can make sure that they're taken care of. Thank you. Anyone else in the governing body? Dr. Aldridge. Thank you, Mayor Collins, for you. Um, Andrew, I'm just curious as to um, was the, did we visit at all with the symphony that uses our civic center and will the sound system be beneficial to them as well? Mr. Mayor, you, Councilman Aldridge, this system can be pared down to fit multiple groups within our uh, jurisdiction. Our, we have a lot of longstanding clients, such as the uh, symphony orchestra, multiple dance companies, and other groups such as elementary schools, that this system, when pared down, will still complement their needs. And because we designed it to be mobile, we can take it down so it's not just a giant line array system inside of the theater. That way, the kids can be the forefront, not the sound system and we can make it so that they can also be heard very well. Dr. And follow-up question, Mayor Collins, um, through you. I'm just curious also about the quality of translation virtually, because I know that um, some of those presentations, especially through COVID, have gone to a virtual or a hybrid situation. And I'm just wondering about the sound translation in a virtual setting. Mr. Mayor, through you, Councilman Aldrich. The sound, the sound translation would be a separate component to this system because the translation isn't necessarily through the amplified PA system. We would need to investigate alternate means, which we do have the capability through our mixing boards. We would just need a means and a desired platform for the translation. Anyone else from the governing body? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Escobel. Yeah, when we're looking at a newer system like this and using it in an older building like the Civic Center, what kind of a adjustments do we have to make for acoustics? Mr. Mayor, through you, Councilman Esquivel. 
this system was designed with a couple of uh, ventilation and uh, sound propagation um, ideas that make it so that the sound is not necessarily going to be just bouncing off the walls into an empty space. It can be designed to be used in a 90 degree or 100 degree curvature so we can reduce the amount of reflections off of the wall. And even though the space is 40 years old, these kinds of sound systems have been deployed in buildings that are hundreds of years old. And the designers behind it spend their entire lives making sure that theaters such as ours can keep their livelihoods for those hundreds of years. Well, Mr. Mayor, that's good to, to know in a place like the Civic Center, we want the people in the front row to have the same experience as the people that are in the balcony house. Great, thank you. All right, anyone else in the audience? Andrew, thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. All right. We have a motion and a second to buy a sound system. All those in favor, yeah. please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the uh, consideration of the bid is approved. Next item is 36C, request to purchase a used brush truck style vehicle for the City of Cheyenne, Cheyenne Fire and Rescue Department. All right. Is there anyone in the audience like to speak to this? Is our fire chief here? Jennifer. Mr. Mayor, I do believe that we have, um, and I, I hope I don't mess up his title, but I think um, but, uh, Battalion Chief Andrew Dykeshorn online with us. Okay. If we do have questions. And I apologize again if I messed up his title. I think we have Chief also in the audience too. So uh, if one of you want to give us just a quick update of, on why we're buying a brush truck, uh, I'd appreciate that. Whoever. Andrew. Yes, sir. Andrew Dykeshorn, Division Chief of Operations. Thank you, sir. For Cheyenne Fire Rescue. Um, through you, Mr. Mayor, we um, are requesting this purchase preemptively. Um, due to the market concern and, and everything else going on, we're having a, a very difficult time uh, getting our hands on some vehicles. Um, the, uh, the three to four week process to, to move things normally um, has uh, been very, very difficult in the, in the current market when we are trying to buy some of these um, used brush trucks. Um, what this what this truck is is, is an F450 F550 type vehicle um, that allows us to uh, facilitate a quick response to our um, grass fires, wildland fires, um, and to help out our mutual aid partners. Um, currently, we've we've had our sights on uh, several vehicles, and they've uh, they've flown out right from underneath us. Um, again, the, the bid process does does put us at a at a disadvantage in the in the current market and. Um, I can provide uh, any other information if anybody else has any other questions. Thank you, Chief. You know, what uh, what the fire department has shared with me is uh, one of these uh, pieces of equipment new can run us up to a half a million dollars. And they have some of these units that are used with a thousand or 2000 miles. They've been used as a demo that you can buy for like around $150,000. And we found these vehicles, but by the time they go through our process, um, they're already sold. So what we're asking for is pre-approval to buy one of these machines when one becomes available. We'll send Mr. Bell to look at it from our fleet maintenance to make sure that the uh, the piece of equipment is um, appropriate and in good mechanical shape. And if he is, we'll be in a position then to compete to buy one of those. Um, Mr. Mayor, just to piggyback on that, being as I'm in the the, the, uh, the car business or the, the vehicle business, it's a it's very dynamic business right now, especially with specialized pieces of equipment. If you don't have the money today, they're, they're sold to somebody else tomorrow. So I, I would wholeheartedly support this. I was uh, honestly opposed to this at the beginning, but when they talked about what happened down in Boulder, where grass fires blew with high winds into populated areas and, and hundreds of homes were burned, uh, that got my attention real quickly. We have a lot of grass and a lot of wind here. And so I became a very big fan of a brush truck. And so that's where the, the, the purpose of, uh, of this uh, request has come from. And with that, is there anyone else in the audience like to speak to this request? How about from the governor, Mr. White? Mr. Mayor, the recommendation of the Finance Committee is to approve in an amount not to exceed $150,000, and I so move. Second. Seconded by President Roybal. Comments from members of the governing body. Mr. Uh, Laybourne. Well, I want to applaud the uh, fire department and their efforts here, and particularly in that internet, I think that this piece of equipment will be particularly effective in that uh, city-county interface, and as was noted earlier, 
to help our partners with uh, issues like this, because uh, with climate change, we're seeing exactly what happened in Boulder, Colorado. And it is important that we have the ability to respond to those, uh, I guess you'd call them brush fires or grass fires. Um, and uh, I certainly hope that we can find ways to uh, take a look at uh, fire related issues as I did recently with Chief Matthews there in a wooded area over on the south side. So it's very important that we pay attention to those uh, potential fire issues in areas that are adjacent to homes and businesses and certainly uh, on the edge of town. So uh, this is this will be a really good uh, opportunity for us to expand our services. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the governing body? Just like to make one more comment. I did meet with the fire union to make sure that uh, this wouldn't be a problem and uh, they're very much in favor of it and, and willing to work with us to make sure that we don't have any problems as far as the union contract and the manning of this particular piece of equipment. So did very much appreciate uh, the teamwork that we got from that. Any last comments from members of the governing body? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? The uh, request to purchase is approved. Next item is 37A, Bar and Grill Liquor License Application filed with the City Clerk's Office for Billy Jack's, Wyoming LLC, doing business as Billy Jack's Pizza Pub, 4020 Airport Parkway, West Suite 1, Cheyenne, Wyoming. Gentlemen, did you want to come speak? Thank you for being here, sitting through our meeting. If you'd identify yourself for the record, please. Um, I'm Jerry Cox, Director of Operations for Billy Jack's Pizza. Um, hello, Mayor, Council members. Uh, we are in the process, as you know, um, applying for the bar and grill, but that's kind of like a, a secondary license for us, um, falling under the airport retail umbrella. So at this point, um, the last I spoke to Tim at the airport um, on Friday, they had not, their, their lawyers had not gotten back with them um, we are waiting on the contract between us and them on how we will use the license and how that will fall under us, which they have to have at the time that they turn in their application. So at this time, we are asking the council and the mayor to put our license on a two-week hold before you do a final approval on it. Um, as, I, as I spoke last time at the last meeting, that we do intend on actually pulling back on that bar and grill license. But at this time, we're not ready to do that. We would still like to keep it into a secondary for us as that safety net. Understood. So you're asking for a two-week postponement. For a two-week postponement. Understood. Anyone else in the audience like to speak to this bar and grill license before us? All right. Mr. White, may we have a motion? Uh, Mr. Mayor, the recommendation of the Finance Committee is to approve, and I so move. Seconded by President Roybal. Mr. Mayor, as you just heard, uh, the, rec the uh, desire from the business uh, making the application is to postpone for a two-week period until the next meeting of the governing body. And I would so move. It's so been moved by Mr. White, seconded by Mr. Escobel to postpone for two weeks. Uh, any comments from members of the uh, public on the postponement? This is what you were asking for, correct? Correct. All right. How about from the governing body? Hearing on all those in favor of the postponement, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? We will postpone for two weeks. Thank you. Next time is 38A, voucher report. All right, is there anyone in the audience like to speak to the vouchers? Mr. Ridgway. Welcome, sir. Do me a favor and pull that microphone up. You're tall and make sure we get you. There you go, thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I only have a, a few to address, and I forget on the order um, on what's best to look at them. Just read them to us and we'll figure it out. Okay, uh, it is a payment to Harold F. Johnson Masonary. It is a uh, purchase order date of 22008907. Uh, in the question I have, this is, I understand it, it's a statute based installation. I understand that process, but they go back to, this is a 2012 ballot that the money was pulled from. 
and this is what's on the voucher report. I was just curious if that was a fifth or a six penny ballot. And then what it says, uh, it says public safety furniture and fixtures, 2012 ballot. All right. And I, and I thought that that was kind of out of the scope. Let's get an answer for you. Um, Mr. Mayor, that is the six penny ballot. Okay, thank you. And do you know what it was for, Ms. Lachman? Um, the invoice says statute based install set of statute. So I, Chief Francisco could probably answer that better. Mayor Collins. Oh, I know what it is. It's the Eagle. Yep, please go ahead, Chief. Well, I was gonna say, sir. <laughs> it, it was, uh, Mr. Mayor, through you, it was the donation of the Eagle statue the base it sits on that's now in our lobby. Yeah. Mr. Ridgeway, we had a very beautiful uh, piece of art that was donated uh, by a family that was leaving town and they put it in the, um, the entryway of the uh, police department and this was the, the base to place that on. Okay, and, in, and that's not really the, you know, the, the objection, but it's, it's, it was six penny ballot money. And then from what we've talked about in the past or what I've heard in the past is, if you have a six penny project, that money has to be used specifically for those items. And that's public safety furniture and fixtures. And I'm thinking that a masonry stand is kind of a bit out of that scope. Well, it's in the, it's in our public safety building and it is for the, uh, uh, the art and statue in, in that building. So, um, maybe we disagree on that one, sir. Okay. Uh, so Jennifer did. Um, I do have um, T.J. Bartlebert with his hand raised, and he hasn't put it down, so I'm not sure if he has let's, something let's to say. Let's have T.J. Down. weigh in on that one, please. Good evening, Mayor and City Council members. I, I believe Chief Francisco answered that, but I'm happy to clarify anything else if you need it. I'm confirming that was the statue installation in the Public Safety Center. Thank you. Thank you. And then do we know... Uh, the, the amount left in the 2012 six penny ballot. Did I get that amount? Uh, Mr. Please. Mayor, just give me a second. I'm thinking it was like $1.2 million, but we'll see how good my guess is. <laughs> so, Mr. Mayor, that is actually $1,086,753. What's next, Mr. Ridgeway? Okay, uh, the next is uh, uh, invoice number, or no, purchase order 22009215. This is for $2,508. Says Celtic Women Catering, Food and Medical Supplies. And I'm sure this is for uh, one of the events at the Civic Center but I didn't know that they were, if that's part of the contract where they cater food and then the type of medical supplies. Mr. Sanchez. Jason Sanchez, Community Rec and Events. That is correct. We have in our contracts sometimes a food uh, item that we have to purchase for the bands or the groups when they're traveling. So this is part of that contract. It is not medical, but it is the food. And so the, the, the line item is food and medical, but what this specifically was for food. Correct. Thank you. Next, okay. Mr. Ridgeway. Uh, the next is uh, purchase order 22009023 for $1,636. Uh, this is a, an invoice to Holiday Motors. It says Greenway truck repair due to plowing. And the questions I have, if it was a if it was an accident, uh, if it was a mechanical breakdown, if there was negligence involved. Does anybody know? <clears throat> Was that one of yours, Mr. Sanchez? Jason Sanchez, Community Recreation and Events. I'm sure the invoice went through our fleet maintenance. Um, I'm not sure the nature of the repairs. It could be on an old truck. It could be that if the depth of the snow was such that we couldn't see a curb and the, you know, the staff clipped a curb and may have done damage. I'm not sure, but I can get an answer to that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I was just concerned if there, if it was a vehicle damage, if it was negligence on the driver, and then you're throwing that back to the taxpayers. I didn't know if there was an investigation if 
well, I guess we'll wait and see what. I just know that our, I think our, our minimum is $5,000, anything below that we're responsible for. So if, if no matter what the, the circumstances, the first 5,000 we're responsible for. Okay. Uh, the next purchase order 22008888, uh, $319 to Wyoming Armored Service Cargo and Courier. And then the, there's an explanation that this is a transport service of city's daily money to American National Bank. And is that a is that a per day charge that they charge? Ms. Lockman. Uh, Mr. Mayor, that's a per month charge. Per month charge? Okay. All right. That just wasn't clarified. And then if it if it was like a daily amount, I didn't know if that's something that the the Cheyenne Police Department could do as an escort rather than having a, a bank courier for it. Understood. Thank you, Mr. Ridgway. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience want to speak to vouchers? Hearing none, how about from the governing body? All right, next item, please. 38B, revenue report. Is there anyone in the audience want to speak to the revenue report? Other than to say there's not enough. Hearing none, how about from the governing body? Uh, next item, please. 38C, appointment of Jason M. Sanchez as Community Recreation and Events Director for the City of Cheyenne, effective July 6th, 2022. So on these items, the mayor doesn't vote, um, typically. Um, and the reason we're bringing this forward, our, uh, our current uh, director is leaving us in July. But uh, what I've learned is that um, we need to figure out who our next director will be so we can hire, maybe promote somebody from within to be a deputy director, which then means we'll have five or six other promotions throughout our department. And so instead of getting into the busy season and not having those things all set, uh, I'd like to at least set those things straight. And so um, with that, I would entertain a motion. Move to approve. Second. Second. I'm moved by Mr. Roybal and seconded by Dr. Aldridge. Comments from members of the governing body. Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify. Oh, did you want to speak? Yeah, you got to speak up. I turned my mic on. I can't see. <laughs> yes, sir. I'd like to speak. Yes, ma'am. Um, Mayor Collins, for you, I just wanted to say, um, I really uh, um, know that uh, Teresa is going to be missed and we really appreciate her service to our community. But I think um, if we have to lose her that we couldn't think of a better replacement than Jason. Um, he is tireless in working for our community. I don't ever see anybody else um, that's there on Saturday mornings on the Depot Plaza getting things ready, Friday nights, closing things up. Um, making sure that community service projects come off without a hitch. And um, I think he's going to do an amazing job for us. And I'm looking forward to, um, he's getting big shoes to fill, but I think he'll do a great job. And he's been trained well by Teresa. So looking forward to having him serve in that capacity. I didn't think Teresa had that big of shoes, but uh, <laughs> anyone else? All right, hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The appointment is approved with Mr. Johnson voting no. Next item is 38D, announcement of a public hearing to be held June 13th, 2022 at 6 p.m. in City Council Chambers, 2101 O'Neill Avenue, Cheyenne, Wyoming, and via electronic conference meeting for a bar and grill liquor license application filed with the City Clerk's Office for SAF Compliance LLC, doing business as Paris West Restaurant and Bar, 1719 Central Avenue, Cheyenne, Wyoming. Announcement of a public hearing to be held June 13th, 2022 at 6 p.m. in City Council Chambers, 2101 O'Neill Avenue, Cheyenne, Wyoming, and via electronic conference meeting for a proposed trade of real property owned by the City of Cheyenne, described as a portion of Missile Drive Block 1 consisting of 2.35 acres and having an appraised value of $547,658 to Retail Properties LLC for real property owned by Retail Properties LLC, described as a portion of Greer Leach Edition, fourth filing, lot four, block nine, consisting of 2.89 acres and having an appraised value of $548,083. Announcement of a public hearing to be held June 13, 2022 at 6 p.m. in the City Council Chambers, 2101 O'Neill Avenue, Cheyenne, Wyoming, and be electronic conference meeting for a proposed trade of real property owned by the City of Cheyenne, described as Story Boulevard Extension, lot one, block six, consisting of 2.25 acres and having an appraised value of $86,000 and 1720 Capitol Avenue, win addition, lot one, block one, consisting of 2.18 acres and having an appraised value of $1,040,000 and 
real property owned by US 30 BP LLC described by or described as US 30 Business Plaza second filing lot one block one consisting of 2.86 acres and having an appraised value of $1,357,000. Other business. Thank you very much. Is there anyone in the audience like to speak under other business? Nothing, Jen Jennifer? Okay. How about from the governing body? Mr. Mayor. Mr. White. I just wanted to, uh, I'll try and be brief, but um, I sat down with uh, Mike Skinner, our council admin, uh, Jen McClellan, and Deputy Clerk Kylie Soden. A couple weeks ago, I was having a, a, a well, a, I was trying to find something in our archives uh, in, a, in a past a meeting agenda, and I just, it, it's not, it wasn't very user friendly. And so I just had this, uh, I just figured there's got to be a better way to organize some of this information for ourselves and most importantly for uh, the folks that we represent in the community. So the four of us uh, had a uh, Zoom meeting so that I could uh, kind of show them a screen that I was looking at uh, that kind of had the format that I was thinking about. And in two weeks time, uh, Mr. Skinner, Jen's pointing to, they're pointing to each other. So uh, that shows you the collaboration, but uh, Mike was able to organize that he sent out a press release today. Um, did Mike, did it go live today? So if, if anyone wants to go to the city homepage and you click on the meetings and agenda icon, now everything is separated out by council, by finance committee, by public service committee, by committee of the whole, and everything is archived by year. And then it just, uh, goes down and lists the dates of each meeting that we have, and you have the agenda, you have the minutes, you have any type of information that we get, any amendments, all organized uh, by date. And it's just, a, it's much cleaner, much use, more user-friendly for us and everyone else. And I just wanted to thank uh, Kylie, Jen, and uh, especially Mike for getting that done in such a quick manner. So thank you guys. Wonderful. Thank you. Anyone else? I just have one note, and that is uh, next Wednesday would typically be our committee of the whole meeting. Yep, I guess we have a fifth week first, don't we? Here, right. So uh, instead of June 8th, the normal Wednesday, it actually is going to be on Tuesday, June 7th. We have a lot of folks going to be out of town. So just if anybody was hoping to come to our next committee, the whole where the budget will be discussed, it'll actually be on Tuesday, June 7th, six o'clock, right here at this place. And Mr. Escobel. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you on Saturday, we had an opportunity to go tour with Camilla, and uh, we got to see the new fence they put up to enclose that campus. And uh, they also mentioned about extending that fence in front of the Stagecoach Motel. And my concern was that that's going to leave very little room between the fence and the road. So we're probably gonna have to look at the getting with YDOT about having some type of a railing or barrier there for protection of pedestrians. It's just too close to the, that road. So just wanted to pass that concern on. So glad you're here, Mr. Cobb. To... Thank you, sir. Anyone else under other business? You know other business to come before us, we are adjourned. Thank you so much. <laughs>